Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? Very good. It's great to be here. Uh, for those who haven't met me, my name is Rudy. Um, every now and then, I get to come here and have conversations with you. So I'm not here to teach anything. We're here to learn together. Um, we're having another episode of the uh, Spiritist uh, Review. So what this is, it's kind of a show, a meeting, a talk show where we come here and we talk. It's exactly what a talk show is for, right? But it's not me talking to you guys or whoever's up here talking to you. It's a conversation that we all have. So it's important that you participate. Here is uh, now is the time for you to uh, ask questions, things about spiritism that you are um, curious about or something that is not very clear. Uh, we usually have a theme and we try to stay within those within that topic. But if you have questions that are not being answered, please by all means, um, ask the questions and participate because this is how the meeting takes place. Now, who's new here? A lot of new people, wow, very good. Now, are you new to spiritism or just visiting the house for the, or just to the house? Just, okay, just to the house, very good, very good. Well, welcome, welcome to our home and it's always great to be here. And it's funny, you always mention that the little reading always has something to do with what we're going to be talking about, That's no point right? And we will uh, mention prayer as we are talking today. It's one of the uh, topics that could come up, yes, well. right? Yes. Always, always. But my, bef my gift. before we get started, let me see something here. You, would you stand up, please? No. Come here. I want somebody who hasn't been here. Would you stand up, please? Okay. Very good. So I just got three people to do something that they hadn't planned on doing and did exactly what I asked them to do without questioning. Right? So maybe they were hypnotized. If I told you that, would you believe that I hypnotized them? And I made them get up and come up here and do it because she's never seen it. She could have said no. So right? you say you haven't seen it before. That's true. That's true. We can say that here, actually, right? Good point. Full disclosure, that's my husband and my niece. So they would come anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? Thank you guys very much. So, what I, so I didn't hypnotize them, right? But something, I invited them to come up here. And they did. They could have said no. So something about me made them say, okay, it's okay for me to go up there. Maybe the place where they are. Right? So that could be. Maybe there's something about me that said, hey, that guy, you know, I can trust him. Right? Aren't people like that? Sometimes you never met someone, but you look at that person and they just give you that feeling of trust and comfort, right? Some people just exude their personal what? Magnetism, right? So sometimes you are able to get people to do things just because they connect at an energetic level with you. Thank you so much for helping me out. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight we're going to be talking about mesmerizing spiritism. And I chose this uh, title for several reasons. Who knows who, me who Mesmer was? Okay, who was Mesmer? Magnetizer, right? Anything you can add about him? One of the greatest. One of the, maybe the most famous one. Well, not in the sense of what he accomplished, but how well known he is, right? I mean, his name became a word. Mesmerizing came from his last name, right? To be mesmerized, to be in awe, right? It's something that is exciting. Your your attention is caught. Your focus is there, right? So the work that he did with magnetism, you know, gave birth to the word mesmerizing. Um, and tonight, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about magnetism and how magnetism and spiritism walk together. Those are usually two things that you don't think that they are hand in hand, right? 
but tonight we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna see how together they are or how much they are apart from each other and in order to do that I have a few guests that will be joining us up here and they are going to help us understand a little bit more of uh, magnetism and spiritism. So with no further ado, I would like to invite my first guest up here. Sabrina, would you please join us? So Sabrina is an instructional developer, and she works on the design and development of training solutions for the US government. Did I get that right? Yes, what yeah. did I say? Pick a spot. All right. Whatever speaks to you energetically. <laughs> OK. Um, Sabrina, there's a few interesting things about you here, right? So you do a lot for the house, for the Spiritist Center. So Sabrina is a speaker. She's also a general coordinator. Um, she coordinates the Department of Passes and Spiritual Magnetic Treatment, correct? Correct. Very good. You also study a lot of magnetism, right? This is one of the things that you do the most. It, and Sabrina also, she researches the benefits of uh, therapeutic mediumship, uh, medi mediumship art, and uh, the connection between magnetism. And you also study art as a complement to? Complementary um, resource for the magnetic treatment. Very good. Now, you do things for fun too, right, Sabrina? I do things a lot of fun. So you like, she likes to paint, she likes to build with Lego, she likes to uh, color. Loves roller coaster, is that right? Yes, I do. Love it. That's my passion. But there are things that you don't like, right? Is that right? You don't like cooking? Is that right? <laughs> That's right. That is correct. That is correct. Well, her husband would know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's something you can put on your plans for the next incarnation? Learn uh, how to cook? Absolutely not, because maybe that's the trauma from the previous one. She doesn't want to commit. <laughs> Anyways, my next guest is Cristiani. A lot of you also know Cristiani. She is also an avid worker of the center. She is an occupational therapist specialized in pediatric uh, aquatics, right? A yoga teacher, a meditation guru. <laughs> <laughs> that was his own doing. For, for those who don't know her, she actually has a series here where she's partnered with Valdo and once a month, every last Thursday, right, of the month, you guys are here to help us with some meditation and some cool uh, hints on ways to live a better life. Now, you love the outdoors, you also, you also love nature sports, right? And then here for the center, you work on passes, right? You also do uh, mediumistic uh, work, and you are obviously a speaker. And you're learning something more, right? I'm working more to get better skilled with the healing part of the passes. Healing part of the passes. Oh. <laughs> so we will be talking a little bit about that, too. And now, my... Other guest here will be Adriana, and nobody knows Adriana, right? She's never up here, she's never speaking. So if you come to the house. Yes. So um, Adriana also works for, uh, for the house. She is a veterinary surgical, surgical technician. Sounds important. My goodness. Now you have, right? Well, you have a son. Well, lots of work I think would be your six cats. She's a cat lover. Now here for the center, you also work uh, with passes, right? You work in the mediumship meeting as well. I'm learning. Hello? I'm learning the passes part. Learning the passes part. Very good. I'm sure you have a, good, a, a great teacher on that. Uh, <laughs> now for fun, it says here that you love scrapbooking. Mixing medium like a DJ? No, like different types of media, like paper, paint, and all, all the stuff that I'm going with. Very, well, I would love to stand up here and talk to these ladies about what they do, but we're here for something else. We're here to talk about spiritism, right? So, yes. You said, turn this off? Grab a mic. Grab a mic. Okay, so I want to go back to the beginning over here where I was talking, pretending that I got to get you guys to do what I wanted, right? But magnetism, personal magnetism, right? A person that has 
a certain appeal to others. That is something that is real. Is that correct? And it could work on a positive or a negative spectrum. Is that correct? Huh? Well, Chris, so why don't you? What What can you tell us about this personal magnetism? Well, we all have uh, a certain energy that comes with us. That's inherent. You are born with something that you, and as you grow through your life here, you the more aware you are of that, you get to know yourself better. So you become a little more in tune with the people that are sort of in the same vibe that you are. When we say, our vibe goes together. We have this way of saying, and our vibe can go together. Because the, sometimes you, you are aware of that, and you go through life understanding why when you get around a certain environment, you feel welcome, and other times you feel repulsed by it. Because you are so in tune with where you are. But sometimes, if you are so worried or not focused, going through life in automatic pilot, you end up not feeling that. But we all have it. We're just not always aware of it, because we're just growing through life like a bulldozer. So that really plays a piece. How aware I am of what I'm going through in life. That's how I find most valuable to understand this connection or lack of. And could I call this uh, a certain energy that we carry, like a vibrational frequency? I would say could, yes. Is that something that people address it as? Because we hear that a lot, right? People saying that, oh, I vibrate at a certain level, or I am an energetic person, right? Or sometimes you meet someone, you say, oh, I really got along with her, right? But I never really met her. In yeah, it's, sense not, of it's not the good or bad. I don't, there is people say, oh, he's a very bad vibe. It's not good or bad. It's where you are. E it's easier to connect with a certain person because you kind of, it's like vinegar, like oil and water. If you put those two together, it's not going to work. But if you put oil in oil, it just blends better. The, the properties of your peri spirit have some particularities that are yours and mine. So sometimes we get along because our oils get together and others don't. Sometimes it's really water and oil. We just don't get, there's something there that just can make it happen. Yes. Yes, please. I understand that part, but how can you, because I have that, mm -hmm. if I go, I can have my body in a good energy, and sometimes my soul doesn't go with that person. But how, but I want to understand, and I want to have a good energy. This is why you're here tonight. Perfect. But We're gonna. I'm trying to work, but I got, how do you work making that happen? This is why we here. We're gonna talk about that. There, there are two ways we can think this. Um, what she, the her standpoint, it's the the energy field, um, which has nothing to do with our moral characters or what that person does to us. Uh, sometimes we we love that person, we kind of wanted to get together, you know, but it's just something that doesn't connect. Um, in that instance, it could be a sort of a, the energy that doesn't click to one another. Um, there are a few ways that you can work that. One of them is that you are aware of this. So, because sometimes we disguise this by, um, you know, we try to avoid or we try to pretend that, oh, it's because she doesn't like me or I don't like her. And not necessarily, um, I've heard some, um, some uh, examples of this can even happen between couples. Um, not that because they love one another, they want to be together, but doesn't connect. And and you know, and when you learn about this, it's just a matter of how you work the energy. And and a few things that you can do, uh, if you are a religious person or not, if you have any beliefs, a prayer is something uh, very good to do. Um, that you can't uh, visualize that person that you want to get in tune. Um, you know, evolved in light and good vibrations and try to solve that. Uh, maybe give it like a, a nice, you know, a nice a card or something that can break up that, you know, that barrier that sometimes that we have. But what I try to do, 
Mm -hmm. Because I have, like, I know what uh -huh. that happened. Then I try to work right in that and try to push myself to see something good about that person. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Thing, but then I try, but that is exhausting. Yes, it is exhausting. And, and the thing is that at some point, like she was saying, we can force that. The most that we can do is to respect one another and, and try because it can happen. I had a, we had a, some, um, you know, throughout the experiences over the years when we have the, the trainings and, and the teachings and things like that. I've seen best friends uh, giving passes to one another and one of them could not cope with the energy of the other. So there was nothing to do with the love of the affection and sometimes it's just the type each one of us carry um a magnetic energy it's like an energy that you know live on us that sometimes it doesn't merge so um, it happens it's very common for instance if you're gonna go receive a passes tonight or whatever you might um, receive the passes with me or her and feel totally different but not because we have anything against you or we have it's just the way it feels the way that it connects um but i guess it's kind of hard for us to push through it you know sometimes um we have to work with what we have and i think that the awareness that this can be possible because sometimes um in a, in a work environment for instance you might have a repulse from that person it never did anything to me but sometimes it happens you know so having this in mind uh, it's very good point to try to work that out so my my energy right so energy radiates right so my energy field is not here where I am, right? So where my body stops is not where it stops. So it goes further out. Several layers, right? right? Layers Several. and layers mm -hmm. in a way that Adriana's energy field right now is mixing with mine. So in a certain way, are we influencing each other? Yes, so definitely. Can, so can I benefit from uh, her good vibrations? You can. Now, if I am in a bad mood, can I bring her vibration down? She can get into my vibrational level. If she allows, it depends on our mind state. So that's why it's very important, um, this awareness, because we, when we talk about magnetism, and we're not talking about something miraculous, is a fantasy, or is it all in the air. We all have this, uh, this attractive energy. So once you go in a place and you don't feel good about it, we have to think about it. Okay, is this me or this is the environment? There's something here that doesn't click with me. Uh, when the person is just like lamenting and complaining and, and you feel some, you know, some discomfort, you have to think about it. Close your mind, um, close, your, close your thought. Don't let that influence you because once you're aware of that, it's, it's very important. I have some instances where I have a very, very sick person sit down closer to me, maybe going to a hospital or something like this, is instantly I can feel it that that person is benefit from, you know, from the vital energy that we have. But we have to be aware because the, the point is not to be exhausted by it. And, and if she is in a day where she's more vulnerable, um, his thought, his, you know, his radiation of the, the magnetic energy may affect her in a way that she is not aware. So uh, it's very important for us to uh, be vigilant when we are around people, the surroundings, the places that we go, the people that we meet, uh, the type of conversations that we are having. All this is not only like body to body. Uh, she can be right here, and I'm speaking to you, and she can be like thinking horrible things about me. And if I'm not aware, I'm going to start feeling, you know, some discomfort and not being able to speak. Right? Well, it's not the case if I'm not able to speak. <laughs> But that's, you know, part of what it can happen as well. Does anybody have any questions so far? So I was just given a fact that our heart, just our heart has a radius of 50 meters as far as radiating energy. I didn't know that. That's interesting. All right? Yeah. We are all merging. We are all, all emerging. We are all together. Very good. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, you might be asking yourself right now, why are we talking about magnetism and spiritism, right? Because a lot of people, even spiritists, right? 
they don't realize that there is a connection between baptism and spiritism. Is that correct to say, Diana? Yeah, would you? Absolutely. Most of the time that we hear people saying that spiritism has nothing to do with magnetism, you see a lot of magnetism treatments and theories and works doing being done outside of centers, which is true, it happens, it's not something that belongs to, to the center, but at the same time, when I hear people saying that, I question if they are actually studying spiritism, because if we start to write, go back to the spirits book, to the gospel, according to spiritism, or any of the spiritist review, you see uh, one after the other, you see many talks about spiritism, especially on the, on the spiritism reviews. Almost every single month of every year, there's some talk about magnetism. And that comes from Kardec being studying magnetism about 35 years before he even l began to, to learn about spiritism. So this is something that since from, from the beginning has been walking hand to hand. It's, it's very interesting, it's very true because I have read uh, in many of the books, the spiritist uh, codification books, uh, a lot about magnetism. Um, in the spirits book, I believe question 555, yeah. there is a direct question in there, right? About magnetism and spiritism. Sabina, you were so excited about this that I'm gonna let you talk about that a little bit. <laughs> no, I was gonna because um, I'm very horrible in reference and memory wise and page, whatever that is, but um, her, hearing um, uh, Adriana, I, I have to, to mention there a Lunker deck on a Spiritist magazine. That's the most quote. If somebody um, ever asks you that or say, oh, magnetism is not part of a Spiritism, uh, that's just see what a Lunker deck said. That's a few things that he just said that the magnetism that prepared the path for the Spiritism. Um, in fact, it, it, it is two science. They are two different sciences, but it's impossible for you to talk about spiritism without mentioning magnetism. And, and what he was mentioning before is this, this split where um, many of the, many parts, I wouldn't say overall, but many uh, you know, instances where in the spiritist movement, we don't hear about magnetism. We don't hear about it. We, we hear about spiritual treatment, but there is a piece of the energy field that we all carry that is also used to benefit one another. And that is part of the spiritism. And that is part of what Jesus brought to us. Um, we and spiritism, we don't do anything different than what Jesus was doing. Um, Jesus, there is no miracle in Jesus' healings. What it was is, He's, he has a power, a very powerful magnetic uh, energy where he could instantly heal. Um, so, and he told us as many times, you can do what I do and even more if you have faith, you have a strong will, and if you love one another. So this is the most, you know, the principle. So we're not doing anything against what Jesus brought it to us in that say. But uh, going back to the quote that I want to bring it to you tonight is that the... They say the magnetism and spiritism are in fact two science which are completed and explained by each other. And it was, and if it was for us to stay out of a magnetism, if a spiritism would leave, okay, forget about this, let's just not talk about the science, would be compared like a, a physics professor that don't talk about light. Uh, so in some instances, Alain Kardec is going to say that it's the same as one science together because they are so connected in the spiritist phenomena, in the middle, in the middle mystic um, piece of the spiritism, it all involves magnetism. And of course, in the, in the part of the spiritual healing, uh, we don't like to use the word healing as the best that comes to my mind, because when you use healing, um, it gives an idea of a promising the person to find the cure instantly and things like that. That's not the case, but magnetism and along with spiritism and philosophical thinking of doing what Jesus taught us how to do, it, put your heart there, put your will there to benefit one another can indeed um, change a lot in, in the other, you know, in between us. So um, 
the the way that Alan Kardec brings to us um, that it's is for a spiritist, even if you are not a spiritist, let's see, none of you are, but even if you were, for us, the spiritists especially, um, whoever is on spiritism should not deny magnetism because there is no way to deny that. And, and in fact, we see that happen all the time. And the purpose for us to bring this talk tonight, um, if you allow me, Rudy, is to try to demystify this thing of what's happening in there, you know, what's what's this thing that everybody, that is no thing, it's no ritual, so that's why we're here, you guys can ask any questions, and if we want to bring questions next time, we're here to answer them. Um, but I think that if we were to just stop for a little bit and look into spiritism and think about the spirit itself, what is the spirit? Some sort of energy, right? It's not material, it's something immaterial, it's energy. What is magnetism? Magnetism is energy, right? And in spiritism, nothing happens just for happening, right? Everything has a purpose. So if you think about Jesus, Jesus came and told us, uh, taught us about uh, life after death, right? And mentioned reincarnation. Jesus also has a, the way that I look at it, a very direct quote about um, magnetism or passes, as we call it, when he says, if you lay your hands onto this onto the sick, you will heal them. Laying of hands is a posse, right? It's when you lay your hand on somebody else, and Jesus is talking about magnetism right there. In fact, he is the biggest magnetizer we've had, right? The biggest of yeah, them all. If we think of Jesus, the difference, just the difference between us and him, Jesus didn't need intermediaries. For us, if we wanted to benefit one another through magnetism, our our energy, our fluid, at the word that Alain Kardec we use in the books are fluid, but we call it energy nowadays, um, it has to be potentialized by the spiritual beings. So Jesus didn't need that. There was an instant pure energy that would be able to heal. Um, so we are not there yet, and and bringing what you're saying, Rudy, about the this part of a Jesus, um, I like, because people ask, what is magnetism? What I debated myself for a long time, because what everybody talks about it. So there is a very simple definition by Alain Kardec that he said that it's reciprocal action of two living beings through a magnetic agent called fluid, magnetic fluid, or we can call magnetic energy. So is this exchange of energy? It can be through a, um, an act like you mean to do that, or just simply like we are all immersed in one aquarium here, uh, you know, in the magnetic field where we are exchanging what we have, a good and bad, hopefully only good, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, that's what we can um you know think of. there's so many things to talk about magnetism. so it's much so hard. much yes and now there are different types of magnetism right yes i'll let right. adriana you want to say yep. that want to talk about that one yeah so <laughs> we have um animal animal or human magnetism right mm -hmm. then there is spiritual magnetism, spiritual magnetism and there is a mixed type of magnetism yes. so usually it's really hard for us to to use only our human magnetism because we know how much we are influenced by the spirit world to the fact that we can pretty much accept the fact that all the time there's some kind of entity around us. So that brings another topic of that we talked a little bit before, the good magnetism and the bad magnetism. So a, if we look on the essence itself, the healing passes that we're doing here, the magnetic treatments on the essence are not different than voodoo dolls or hating somebody in, in the sense that this is something that you are sending to somebody else. So the difference is what intention you're putting. So here the intention is loving, helping the person with all, all goodness that you have within yourself. Now, if you look when somebody's hating another person, the voodoo dolls, all just bad energies, the same thing, you're sending that out to somebody, and that person is receiving. Sometimes they know they're receiving, sometimes they don't. We talked about before, like, 
uh, I work with a lot of people, even though it's veterinary, there's a lot of people at work, and sometimes you walk in the morning and you feel there's one person coming, it's just sucking the joy, and you get exhausted, and it's not even 8 o'clock in the morning, and you're already completely drained. So that part of exchange is going to happen, and the important part is what intention we are putting. And we have to be aware of not only controlling what our intentions, because whatever we send it out is going to be the same vibration that we are receiving, but also what we are allowing to come to us. So in the mornings, when I meet that person that's sucking the energy, is just like hating life, I have an option to come and say, yeah, life really sucks, and get into there, or I have the option of isolate myself, or if I'm strong enough that day, I can come and try to bring something better and make her see in a different view. So in this in so this case, all these kinds. in this example, then it's it's human magnetism, right? It's, it's human. It's animal magnetism. Yes. So it is a person who is incarnate, right? Or mm -hmm. not necessarily a person, right? Because animals are everything has yeah. magnetism, has energy, is energy, I should say. Um, so in that example, it would be. Just animal magnetism, animal, right? It's from a magnetism. living, a living incarnate person, or an animal, or an object, or a substance, right? But then there's also spiritual magnetism, right? Yeah, and that would be like when Sabrina was talking that they can bring it to a higher potential. They can kind of uh, use our energy to a better outcome, mixing with their energies. So that's why the passes here we call a spiritual and human magnetism because we are aware that's a mix between our energy we are putting our best intention but sometimes we like i myself i'm still learning i'm still going to the classes and learning the techniques so even though i may have the best intention but i may not have the best technique so that will be the part that the spiritual side will come in and say okay let's use her energy let's let's work it up a little bit and make make that a better present to the person that's receiving so a person so a magnetizer that doesn't have any kind of uh spiritual construct or belief right when they are magnetizing someone so they are only using of their animal magnetism is that correct because they are not not aware of the spiritual <clears throat> magnetism? I would say not necessarily. You, you, your intention is, you, just because you're not aware doesn't mean you're not being helped. But in that case then, a spirit would have to want to help that magnetizer and, for a specific purpose. And that could purpose. be for other reasons. Sometimes you are not even requesting. You're not mm -hmm. even there for a pass and nothing like that. And you're going about your business and so you feel that once something like people say, I got the chills, and I felt that something was giving me some different energy. We all have experienced something a little, oh, that chill that gave me that something. I just felt it. And you don't even have words to say it because you just can't describe it. That is the spiritual world. Maybe the ancestor, the, the, your guardian angel, somebody's already working for you. There are so many good spirits out there dying to help us. But we are going about our business, pa, 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 doing whatever we want to do. And they are there helping because we are not aware doesn't mean that we are not receiving. We are being blessed and showered with passes of amazing energy all the time, even when we're not aware. Just because we are toddlers going around and not aware doesn't mean we're not getting it. I believe. Um I understand, and I, I completely agree. I think that many times, maybe most times, we are being helped without actually realizing. But um, I believe I, it was Alain Kardec who said that um, a magnetizer, the difference between a magnetizer, right, just somebody who doesn't really have the spiritist side, and a passista, uh, a pass giver, someone who's laying a hand, who is in a spiritual home, is that um, a pass giver, is a magnetizer, it's a spiritist magnetizer, which is the main difference between a magnetizer, mainstream magnetizer, and somebody and somebody uh, in the spirit in a, a spiritist center. 
is that there is this spiritual aspect to it. The other part that I thought was very interesting is that when a magnetizer, let's go back to the mainstream magnetizer, is on a healing um, appointment with somebody, they are drawing from a limited source because they are drawing from that physicality that they have. They're, so that has a limit. And that's why many times at the end of a session, they are extremely tired or they can't even finish helping all the uh, patients they have. Whereas on the spiritual center or a spiritual magnetizer, uh, not only you are offering your limited source, which is your physical magnetism, your animal magnetism, but you're also drawing from the spiritual side, which is a limited source of that, right? And the purity of the energy is different too when it comes, when it's coming from somebody who is incarnate or it's being distilled in the spiritual world, right? Yeah, if I, if I may add to this, I actually was um, reading a passage last week. Um, it's in a medium's book somewhere. I'm so sorry, forgive me, because I don't know. But Alan Kardec asked this question. If, asked to the spirits, okay, this case of magnetizer, mm -hmm. because in his time, there was a lot of magnetizer, a lot of um, uh, doctors that were working with magnetism on those patients that were to totally in disbelief. Uh, there was no cure for in the, in the medical uh, science. So Alan Kardec asked for the spirits, um, so this person that is called magnetizer, that doesn't believe in anything, that sometimes is charging for that session, so is only using his own force, right? His own energy. And the, the answer is just straightforward. We don't need people to believe on us to assist, period. So it's the intention even if that person is, uh, is, forget about what we talk about charity, we're talking about spiritism, nobody ever is gonna charge for any passes in, 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 in this setting over here, but let's see even a person that is doing uh, a healing section using magnetism, if that person is have a good intention, doesn't need to believe in God, believe in spirits, what is going to attract the help is the feeling. It's what the intention is, because it's a magnetic connection. In other instances, I could be inside a temple, inside a spiritual center, inside a church, trying to give passes in my mind, totally off. Sometimes I might be doing more damage to that person than that other one that doesn't believe in anything, but it's there to do its best. So the spirit doesn't choose who believe it or not. They are there is a magnetic attraction. They are going to go whatever there is goodness, whatever. Now, as she mentioned, there are some times where magnetism is a neutral science. It, it is used to provoke, um, you know, other situations that we don't want to mention here. But that's about the intention, the, the, the direction. We, I can, uh, I'll put it myself, I can, literally from this time right now send a thought to somebody in china wishing that person the worst ever and i can guarantee that that person is going to feel something weird at the same time me the same person can send the vibrations of love you know do you know emanate the best inside me and that person is going to feel a surge of, a surge of well-being so this is really real uh, things that we watch on television. If we are, you know, inclined for war movies, uh, you know, I'm not criticizing anybody, but we have to understand what type of connections that we are doing uh, throughout our days. This is what I I think is to bring magnetism into our lives, right? Uh, it, it's about the intention. Uh, so in, in the case that the, our our friend mentioned at the beginning. She has the good intention to get connected to that person, but that person might be closed. That doesn't mean that she's not gonna be helped and still try to do her best, to still try to benefit and somehow, somehow uh, the goodness, like any prayer, any goodness is never lost. That's the thing, so for everything, I think that Alan Kardec was a smart, you know, he's a brilliant mind, but he was so like right to the point what about those people that charge for, for magnetism that doesn't believe in anything? Not efficient? They said, no. Who said that they are not helped? If they want to do good, they are helped. They don't need to know us. 
So I think that is fantastic what he, he put for us there. Speaking of prayer, um, I heard, I read uh, that prayer is the strongest and purest demonstration of magnetism we have, right, as human towards the spiritual, because it is a direct connection between us and God. And there's nothing stronger or more pure than that. And that's what you were talking about. And that's what the little text today mentioned too, right? When you're feeling your worst, there's always prayer. And it's also tied to magnetism. Now, I wanted to, um, there's so much I want to talk about and we're running out of time. But I want to focus on, on the passes a little bit because we all come to a spiritual center. We go into a room and receive our passes, but we don't really know all that is going on in there, right? Most of the times we have our eyes closed. We don't even know what's happening. Right, my my niece as an example. I'm gonna use you, do the. She uh, received her first pass last week, right? and she went in there and she didn't really know what was happening. She said, "Well, you know, I had my eyes closed and I just could feel movement around me," and that made me think, "Well, maybe that's the experience that many other people have when they go into, you know, a room." What's going on here? I see. Is this movement from here? Is this from the out of world, what is going on? I mean, the mind goes places <laughs> when, you know, when your eyes are closed and people are around, everything is quiet, there is music. Something mysterious is happening. So you know? because <laughs> of that, I would like to, I would like for everyone here to actually witness a past, to see what really happens when we go in that room, the connection between the past giver and the patient and all and then we're going to talk a little bit about what happens in there chris would you give adriana a pass Where do I take the next <laughs> put it like yeah like that perfect So the first, the first thing that we usually do is get connected to the person that it's, you, can, you guys can look at her while I speak, don't need to look at me. Get, you know, in magnetic relation with the person, you know, wishing the, the best for her, wishing a very well-being and peace, wishes of peace, etc. And after that, we do what we call magnetic touch, where we try to find where might be a certain imbalance in the energy and, the, you know, in the vital centers that we all have. Um, and then after that, we have some magnetic magnetism techniques, which is not invention of any of us. Um, those techniques were first studied, brought to us, starting with Mesmer and all the magnetizers after him, including Alan Kardec, who we studied with those um, those other uh, people. The 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 problem is that since Alan Kardec came to his spiritism, he didn't talk about those techniques anymore because he was already an expert on that and he said those are the resources that you guys have to go look for so you can learn how to do it and that's what we did so what we are doing here is not invention it's not because we think it's okay to do or we, somebody said that it, it has to be like that it's based on research based on on the you know on real references that Alan Kardec asked us to go look for and, and that's what this is called the the magnetic um magnetism techniques that we use at our center many spirit center has different ways of doing it none of them are right or wrong uh, it's just the way that we chose to work so this don't leave the center saying oh this is good or this one is bad the other center is bad no it's nothing like that we just work differently so and then once she ends the passage you just the now let's talk a little bit about what the person that is receiving the passes it's very important that your mind is open to receive what we see sometimes the person sits down and, and doesn't feel connected you know like he would say what's happening or or i am here because somebody brought me here so it's important for you to really benefit from it 
that you open your mind to receive, that you be a real receptor for of that energy so we can have a connection. Because the person that is giving the passes, it's putting all the will, the, all the strong will, all the, the good intentions for you and me to get better. So it's like I always like to tell people when they look for uh, a treatment or, you know, any, any sort of a condition that 99% of your, you know, healing of your well-being, it's what do you want? Because I can do, I can do everything. And if you don't want it to be better, there's nothing. Don't want to change your, your mindset. There is nothing that even Jesus didn't do that to us, right? He couldn't heal everybody. Not everybody was ready for that. So 99%, it goes for what the person that is receiving, you know, to benefit from it. So there is no mystery. Uh, maybe somebody wants to ask why the, the, the light is blue. There's nothing wrong with the light is blue. It could be any color. It's just because we like blue. And we know that blue is a color that we, you know, so it's a feeling of harmony and peace. That's why it's blue. It could be red, it could be any color. Any questions that you guys have? There is no ritual that's now, you know, I don't know why the chairs are black, but that's what he bought it. <laughs> that would be my answer. So any questions that would be open to answer, right? Does anybody have any questions in regards? No? So in the very beginning, uh, Chris, when you were, so you had your hands over Adriana. What were you doing here exactly? Uh, the, first, the first thing that we normally do. As Sabrina said, you make a connection. And I normally, I ask my guardian angel to talk to her guardian angel. Again, those two different energies. Let's blend them, because if I blend better with her, the pass is going to be more efficient. So I ask if, we, if they can do it ahead of us, the two of them get together. And I ask for the superior spirits, the superior help, to also assist in the best way they can. Then I am looking for the magnetic uh, field, because we have our pure spirit, all these different layers. And each one of us has a different um, width in terms of the, the pair spirit. Sometimes when you find the energy, my hand wants to stop right there. Sometimes a little closer, depending on the person, is a little higher. Not good or bad, just different energy levels. It's, it's really, so you go with that feeling that makes your hand want to stay there. And then you're looking for that energy at the different chakras which is the centers of force in our body, that we've studied about them from the Eastern cultures, like they do that, the acupuncture is based on that, all those energy levels, all those energy centers of force. So we just, instead of going for the entire body to find energy, we go to the main plexus where the energy is concentrated. So in this case, otherwise we're going to be here forever trying to get every single little chakra because the body head to toe has tons of chakras, but they concentrate in plexus in certain places that are that you can feel it better. So you go to each one of them to see if the energy is leveled, if something feels that it could have a little more attention or a little more dispersed energy feels a little blocked so that's what we're doing so a pass is a true magnetic experience then it is right Really, what happens when you are feeling your energy and the more in tune I am, the more I prepare myself to come here, if the better intentions I have when I come here, the better I connect with you, the better you connect with the desire of receiving it, then everything conspires in a favor of that passing going well. So it's, it's easier for me to stop at the right places and give you what you need. Not through me, through me with the assistance primarily of 
the spiritual world that is helping us. There are two connections right at that moment because yes. you uh -huh. are not only connected to the patient, but you are also connected to, to the, the, spirit. the spiritual world. Yes. And you are too. Not only me, you also. When I ask you to connect with the Father, connect with, the, with Jesus, connect with the spiritual world, I'm asking you to help me help you. So then, as, a, as a patient, I'm sorry for asking all those questions, but as a patient, then my intention and my thoughts in that room is very important. Because super where important. Because my intention and my thought is, is going to be a huge part of my healing. Huge, huge part. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I realized uh, every week the points are different, and the people are given in the past is different too. So, and sometimes it's one example. I have a stomach ache. Mm -hmm. The person don't, doesn't know about that, but it's called and give me more at the, uh, attention. Attention to that chakra. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We could call it coincidence, but there is no coincidence, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, well, if I may add to that, the, the whole purpose of passes is to bring uh, balance to your energy field, to those, you know, to those points in our um, spiritual body. But we have to remember, too, that there is no magic formula. Like when we say, oh, you're feeling, no, not exactly what you're feeling. This is like a development you know, more you practice, the more you get more sensitive to. And sometimes we're not going to feel anything. But like she said, we are not alone. There is no, you know, there is no coincidence why my hand is stopped in here. I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm going to do your process. I'm going to. No, it's just stop. So we know that is a force that is a lot more than us. That is, okay, this is the point, which is the attraction, right? So the magnetism will work in a way where it's going to go to where it needs from where it has. It doesn't go where it doesn't need and vice versa. So um, maybe in this thing, I may not even think it or anything, and, and which I'm not, so we're gonna do it. And all of a sudden, her hand stopped right there. You didn't tell me that you had an issue in your stomach. I didn't know, but for whatever reason that we know now that is this attraction, that point is telling the, this is the focus that has to be you know, uh, balanced at this time. And it could be overall, the whole body as well, not only in that uh, it part. Can be, uh, influenced it could be, for sure. Sometimes there, there are many past givers, and, and I'm one of them. I don't, I don't have my senses fully developed in the hands. And, and, and sometimes, not that we keep listening to, oh, the spirit is going to, no, we don't, we don't work like this, like, oh, the spirit is telling me to do this. No, it's a combination. Your sensitivity, your sensibility for what you're doing, uh, your mindset, how connected you are with the work that you're doing. If you did a prayer, if you're connected to that type of uh, you know, environment, and then you're going to be helped. But yes, it looks like something is telling me that it's here. I don't know what it is, but I just felt that I had to stop here. I so yeah, it's, it's a mix of intuition of uh, you know a, in a sensible uh, you know magnetic touch, uh, but it, it is like a, it's it's difficult to explain. And, and each one, and I like when you say that depending on the person that gives me passy, that's different. Indeed, it is. There is not ever uh, the same uh, energy in this room or anywhere else. Each magnetizer will have a different type of energy. It's unique, just like digital. Some will have a little bit more uh, powerful in a way not to be, you know, uh, nose up. That's not what I mean, but the type of energy. Like, for instance, her pass is on you, might be a, a more like a strong and faster benefit than mine, because it depends on what type of energy each one of us carry. You know, and we are only going to understand that when we do like the more like the treatments on, on really like really real illness, a very serious one, where we can see the progress of that person and, and we see, okay, maybe this type of, uh, you know, this type of process is ideal for that type of case. And, you know, we have a, a guideline to start, which is something we can explore, you know, what, because this is like one type of assistance that we have that is more a passage to harmonize all your unbalanced chakras and energies. Just more is a more a faster one, but we have other types of um, assistance that we we offer here too.
I just wanted to make a point about the, this very curious point when you say sometimes I get a different person to give me the pass and the energy is different. And sometimes for four weeks in a row, we get that person in our chair every four times straight. For some reason, the reason is because the spiritual world also knows, not by coincidence, that tonight, if you sit in that chair and the next week again and the next week and the next week, it's going to be more efficient because your energy is lined up with that and you just don't plan it. It just works that way because it works in mysterious ways, right? It's, it's fascinating to feel that. And you say, I'm, again, that person again in my chair? It's yes, because there is something that pulls you energetically to that chair that day. Can I add two things here? About being a different person, different today that you're here, you can, I can guarantee you that each time you come, even if you come and get a pass with Sabrina every single week, you're gonna get a different person every single week. And you're gonna be a different person every week. Because like she said, it's all about the intention and the preparation from the pass giver and for, for yourself. So you are, going to be your state of mind you're going to be dependent on how much you prepare what's going on in your life what happens on the traffic here so you're not exactly having the same energy every time you come here and so will be for the past giver so that's why we work so much on preparation because we can try to maintain the level that we can best benefit the the patients um, Another thing I was going to mention is that, like Christiane talked earlier, that we work on the chakras, and those are plexus of energy. So I don't want anybody to think that if you're getting a pass and the pass givers stop on your stomach, that does not mean there's something wrong with your stomach. I don't want you to go home and start to Google what are the symptoms of stomach cancer because the pass givers stop there. So those are centers of energy. Sometimes the energy that we feel on the plexus, let's say the stomach, the heart, or whatever, it can be related to another place on the body. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen those maps of the feet that when they do acupuncture, sometimes they use the feet because each area is related to somewhere else in your body. So if they stop in whatever area, doesn't mean that's something wrong with the area. It's just blockage of energy that could be related to anywhere else in the body. Oh, it has definitely been a very enlightening meeting. I mean, it's fascinating. It's, and it's something that we don't usually think about, right? There's so much magnetism in spiritism. In fact, if there was no magnetism, there would be no spiritism in that sense, right? Because one kind of run, spiritism and magnetism are tied together. Um, we are way past our time. There's so much to talk about. We don't even. I could be here in two. We didn't even like time. scratch the scratch on the surface, right? But oh, something that would be important for you to take with you from tonight is that whenever you walk into a uh, a room to receive a pass, for you to remember that it's important for you to connect to the spiritual side, for you to set your intention and your thoughts, because part of the healing that you might be looking depend on you as well, not only on the uh, on the magnetizer or the. A spiritist magnetizer and there is a lot that goes in there every single person in that room has gone through a lot and a lot and a lot of studying in all kinds of areas even anatomy is important for them to know uh, if you enjoyed the talk tonight I mean I love talking about uh, magnetism we could definitely do this again just let us know uh, if you guys are interested in continue the uh, conversation we haven't even really started the passes right there's so much to talk about but it's been wonderful being here with you guys again. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Sabrina is going to hang out here and do the uh, vibrations for us, I right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much.